So today we've got something really, really special for you. We are going to show you the world's most luxurious police department. We're here in Beverly Hills, and I'm sure everybody knows Beverly Hills is renowned for, you know, high end, but this takes things to a whole nother level. And we're here with Sergeant Newman. Mike, great to meet you. Great to meet you well, too. Welcome to the most luxurious police department in all the world. <laughs> These guys are just amazing. I, I am so blessed to be able to live in this city with a police department that, that takes great care of us. I think you have the fastest response time of any police department, right? So our emergency response time on average is below three minutes. So I don't know if it's the fastest in the entire world, but I bet you it is. That's pretty fast. <laughs> so what are we gonna get to see today? So we're gonna take you behind the scenes. I know you live in the city, you get to see what the police department does a lot, but we wanna take you behind the scenes and kind of show you the inner workings of the police department. What do you say we maybe go to the shooting range, go to the jail? maybe see our technology of the real-time watch center and see just why this department is the best in the world. Let's do it. This is your entrance to the jail. So a couple things. Uh, I don't know if you guys have any weapons on you. Does anybody have any weapons? I I've got machine so, gun oh, and uh, no. Yeah, I was expecting you to say you have two guns right here. Right. Uh, oh, you got one. I perfect. do. I'm So afraid. I'm going to take this and we're going to lock these things up. What is that? I just a knife. Oh, Ju just a knife. Just a knife. So I think is that legal? Is that one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're gonna put our firearm in here. Yeah, I'll check that if it's illegal later on. Maybe we can keep it. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I also that have would a knife. Be fun. So there's a couple things that we can't bring in the jail: weapons like knives, guns, etc. But like a taser. Can we taste somebody? Uh, you know, uh, let me see. We'll, we'll, we'll see you later on. Yeah. So in maybe we get somebody to volunteer to take it. Uh, maybe we could actually that, maybe that, arrange that. Don't look at me. Uh, <laughs> on this side with the visitor rooms you have behind you, you literally have the typical. Oh like, wow. You have the lawyer come in and actually sit there and talk to a client, just like the movies. Can you put him in the other side? Yeah, absolutely. I want to talk yeah, to you on that. one of those phones. Oh my gosh, the the, yeah. the, the chair. Oh yeah, it's, make sure you can't do anything with. Can your, you see this, Adam? Okay. I'll even shut the door so you can have a, a private moment with oh, your wow, client. Oh, that's very short. Hello. Hello. How, how's it going? Oh, I'm being monitored, it says. I know, yeah. Yeah, we, we are here too. They're very short cables, aren't they? They're very short. I wonder if that's so you can't like wrap it around your neck. You have a comfortable chair. This is the, this piece of content, etc. I know. I, I, to be fair, look, I have, I have two. So I could actually take one of these and put my feet up like this. Can't hear you. This is thick glass. Okay, I want out of here. <laughs> All right, you want to go to jail? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> That's the easiest I've ever had to do that. Wow. <laughs> this is the main jail Hi. floor. Hey guys. There's two of our jailers. Hope this is the only time I meet you guys. Taylor and Mora. I'm joking, you. This is the fingerprint machine, just uh, what it is. You put your fingerprints obviously on this green You'll go, Adam. My guy? And yep. it will actually uh -oh. upload your fingerprints to the different datas, uh, databases, the FBI, et cetera, go ahead. to make sure you are. I'm good, want. actually. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Weirdly, I burnt my fingertips the other day. Oh, so. yeah, so in that case, yeah. Yeah. Oh, dear. nothing left. Nothing else we can do. <laughs> oh, dear. On this side, we have what we would call like the intoxication cell. So you can tell, them, first off, it echoes nicely inside of here, but they have a. Uh, a padded floor. Oh wow! So when somebody is unable to, yeah, if someone is uh, intoxicated, where we need to watch them a little bit more, this is one of the places where we can do that. Uh, we can even put something on the ground for them if they want to sleep here. What's that? It's a uh, lovely. It's not a swan toilet. <laughs> <laughs> would this be the wrong time to do a swan toilet integration? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of interesting. And then we have two... Um, why, why is the floor like this? Because drunk people won't bang their head if they fall over. Oh, yes. okay. We're hiring, so if you want to see, he's got it spot on here. <laughs> uh, we also have different places where inmates can make a phone call. By law, we have to give them phone calls. Some of the people advertise in the jail for bail bonds and so things like crazy. that. And someone who sits down could choose to call one of them or anybody else that they want to when they're getting processed. And they get one phone call? No, they get more. And even if they have kids, they get even more because they want to make sure we have adequate care for child. Oh, uh, who might great. get home. So uh, we have two holding cells here, and it's your typical cell. This would be fun to build in a house, right? <laughs> With kids, <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah. you've been misbehaved. <laughs> <laughs> Into the holding cell you go. Exactly. 
Handcuffs? Uh, you'll notice there's handcuffs when we have a mass like a, a arrest thing that goes on or an incident, I should say, let's say like during a, a protest that goes wrong, turns a riot or something like that. Uh, we can process many people through this facility and part of that is to have them restrained if need be. Put that handcuff on even if you'd like, uh, because I do have a key. Well, is it the right size? Yeah. Oh yeah, They're all the right one size, size fits I most. I have a B, <laughs> maybe it's nice to have a B. I know, uh, the bottom one, the bottom so, one. No, no, go down one. One there, there you we go. go. I have some experience putting these on. There we go. Put it All right, on you ready? Yeah, yeah, let's, let's go. Let's go. Right. Do you want to be? See you later, Michael. See you in a bit, mate. Bye. <laughs> I don't like this. So, is this how you would put it on at this level? Or so, do you make it, it when someone's to? sitting, yeah. So, when someone's sitting here, it's a lot easier just to kind of relax your arm here, and you're still restrained. Can if you, you let me out, get, I can. Yeah. I can do that. Huh? And here, there we go. This is not comfortable. No, they're not made for comfort. They are metal around your wrist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not ideal. It's not like a Cartier bangle or something. <laughs> <laughs> This is That's the main funny. jail floor. Uh, then we'll kind of walk down. We'll can show you some of the regular cells uh, that we actually have. On the right is that big. elevator I was telling you about. So oh, this the is where they come up. up. There's the little height chart. You can kind of see how tall you are. And someone gets processed here. So they search them, make sure there aren't any weapons on them. And then they would move into the jail facility, including the red footprints here, which are when you would answer questions for classification purposes. Right. Have you ever been arrested uh, for a violent crime? Are you part of a gang? Those type of things to help us classify. And they won't tell you though, right? Depends. Yeah. Some people do. Uh, really? It just depends on the person and what their circumstances are. We get a lot of unique answers. Oh, sure, right? <laughs> so perfect timing. You already read my mind. The kitchen, that's where the filet mignon and- uh, This is and, for the inmates. Yes, no, that's not. That we serve the inmates actually in the cell when you be. This is actually the uh, a padded room. So we have, let's say a violent or combative arrestee who does not want to listen, doesn't want to do what they're supposed to. As you notice, there's nothing in this room pretty much at all, except for these padded walls and floor. The drain even, because unfortunately people like to do bodily functions in here. And so sometimes, are you, yeah. Are you glad right Yeah, now? right, so good, they wash your shoes afterwards. But oh sometimes my God. we have to literally wash the room out. <laughs> don't want to be in here. What, what, is, what is this? Somebody tried to break out? Uh, you know, that could be. It could be someone who's, you know, experiencing a mental health crisis who tries to pitch away at it, chew at it, whatever it may be. It's Dude. actually very uncomfortable when you're inside that room. It, it's not pleasant. No, it's very oppressive. Yeah, for sure. very, very much so. And we don't keep people in here for a long time. Once they're calmed down, for instance, we like to move them to a normal cell. And you probably we'll don't see. like to put them in there in the first place. No, and that usually means that we're dealing with them in a, a more combative scenario. We don't want that at all. May it's, I interrupt you? Of course. Do you have any prisoners in here right now? So we do on the far side. Okay. So that's why we're going okay. on this okay. side. Okay. But you know, I could have it to where you happen to run into one. No, no, no. And it's fine. <laughs> Oh wow. And see, we have numerous cells. Each one will oh. house one person. Are there that many criminals in Beverly Hills? Thankfully, not usually, uh, but we do have the capacity just in case. H has it ever been full? Uh, I don't know if it's been full full because we did have one time we arrested a lot of people during a uh, 2020 during the protests and civil unrest that we did fill a lot of the cells and process a lot of people. Whether it was completely full or not, I don't know, but it was certainly the most we probably ever had. What's well, your capacity in here? Uh, what is it? 36. Okay. Yeah, and that's actually housed, right? So we could actually have some people waiting and getting processed, yeah. but yeah, 36. Uh, and again, it's very rare we shower. Up. Yeah, and we ask uh, certain inmates to do so. Because they smell, <laughs> right? Sometimes. <laughs> you want to go check out one of the cells? Yeah. No, 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 I'm fine. The, bell's, the, the bed's quite nice. Would actually. you like to go in or yeah, hold sure. the camera? We won't, we won't shut the door. I'm on. happy to hold the camera. <laughs> oh, a mattress and everything. I know, yeah. it's, it's actually pretty nice. You got a window, nice. kind of like the one I've got in my Can truck. Can we lock him in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you were the one locked in handcuffs. So yes, that's only, true. That's true. Right, it's nice. Guess. You got power outlets here, so you can plug in your iPhone. <laughs> yeah. Are I mean, they allowed to bring their phone in here? No. no. <laughs> But it's still just, you know, I'm sure whatever that was for is maybe it's for maintenance purposes. Because uh, if there's no electrical outlet here and you have to replace or fix something, uh, you're running a power cord obviously all the way. Right. But yeah, everything's pretty much locked in. You got your sink, your bathtub, or your, uh, your toilet. And you think about the movies like where it's Alcatraz and they're trying to pull the toilet away from the wall and chisel through. Well, if you did that, you're just in this <laughs> Just escape to here. Yeah, or, or in general, if you tried to go out that way, you're on a third story of a building. So there's not a lot of options for people to escape here, uh, which is good. I heard a rumor 
that you have like a luxurious suite where you can pay to stay in it. So that program called Pay to Stay, we suspended that during COVID. However, I can show you one of the rooms. I don't think all the furniture's there anymore, but it was like, a, yeah, kind of a luxurious. Like a hotel room, right? <laughs> Oh yeah, I can show you this real quick. This is how we could have someone either handcuff up so they can put their arms out backwards and get handcuffed, or we can serve them the food through there if we don't want to open that door at all. So that's a, the option. Each one of those can do that. And Lovely. I'll show you that. The, I'll show you the, the penthouses of all penthouses. Yes, let's see the, <laughs> so, what are these? This is some storage that's a gurney. stuff. So the gurney on the right was the old way where we would have in a combative arrestee who says, I don't want to go with the program. We'd sit them in that, handcuff them to the gurney, and wheel them into the jail. The issue was that a gurney, even though it's very stable, it is not as easy to control someone, and it's so wide that it's very difficult to get next to them as you're trying to pull this thing in. So the next evolution I'll show you is a chair. And this, let me move this thing here real quick. These things are awesome. This chair here is a, a more secure way. So someone can sit here, get completely strapped in, and you can live like a wheelbarrow. <laughs> and pull someone wherever you need to go. And the advantage with this is, even if you rock and move and everything else, you ain't going anywhere. And so let's say we have to do a forced blood draw. So we need to take blood from a DUI suspect, for instance. We'd sit them in this chair, have someone come, and they can't move their arm at all, and they can extract that blood if need be, usually Whoa. by a search warrant. So that's that option. But then we evolve from there, because this is kind of expensive. And we said, let's stop over here, and let's take a look at some even better and more efficient and cheaper option that helps out officers. This looks like a Costco bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you can do your Costco shopping uh, from this for sure. That cart would be worth a lot of money. drinks in the back, look. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Put your Stanley flask in there. Yes, so you can really be in any so, free samples you get. Too. So you put somebody in this. So you first, look at you this would thing, put though. them in this thing called the wrap system. So the wrap is, uh, I, I like to call it the human burrito, uh, but essentially, this is over your legs and it actually will wrap your legs, this portion here, and you strap those in. So we actually would have some, you see knees here. You'd actually put the suspect's knees there and wrap their legs. Now you take this portion, which is almost like a, a glorified shoulder harness. And can you guess which side's the back and which one's and the front? No idea. <laughs> yeah, we make it easy, you know, stupid proof. From there, this part would go over them and they get connected to this and you actually sit in an L and it's strapped to where you can't move, you can't do anything. It's like a straitjacket. And it's almost like a hammock because <laughs> you're not gonna get hurt. You can't right. hurt yourself. And even if you try to bang your head on something, we have that helmet. So we can actually take this, throw that under the suspect. They can't hurt themselves. We're not hurting them. It's and just like a Taekwondo this, helmet. Yeah. Right, yeah, it does kind of like that. And in this, we're basically just having them in like an L relaxed hammock position. And we have never seen a suspect be more happy. I'm sure. <laughs> they sit there and they just go, ah, oh, there's no more fight. There's right? nothing to do. And you can actually hoist the person up and put them right into our Costco shopping cart and bring them to the <laughs> checkout. So uh, a great piece of equipment. The first time we ever got it and we used it on a suspect, uh, I mean, it was just immediate officers loved it. Loved it. How many officers does it take to put somebody in that? So um, you could do it with two. Uh, realistically, if you're dealing with someone who needs to be in that, you already have numerous officers on scene. Right. And four is probably a good, good number to help out with everything. I'll, I'll put that away, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> this is the penthouse. This is the penthouse of penthouse. No, it's just bare bones now, but just use your imagination to imagine the potential. Of this. Dining table, <laughs> sofa. Right. Bed. And what is a real estate term they say is like, it's cozy. That's keyword. Cozy. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's cozy. Location, location, location. <laughs> yeah. And what is this in here? This is for your visitors? This is for your pets. Yeah. Instead of one person, we could use this to house numerous people. A family. <laughs> Usually we don't have families, but yeah, I guess it could. So this is the same thing. If you look, when we go on the other side of the room, you'll see it's basically the exact same thing. You have four or so beds over here. And then you'll see on this side, it's similar. So how did this work? So somebody would pay money yeah. to stay in this suite yeah. and then they could have their own food. So they would bring, it has to be someone who has a, uh, let's say a short sentence. Let's say you're sentenced to three days in county jail. Okay. Well, instead of serving county jail, if you have no medical problems, you have no medication you need to take or be distributed to you, uh, you bring your own food and you wanna be here for let's say three days. 
you could pay at the time to stay here for that instead of going to county jail where they're not going to give you any accommodations you'll be with everyone else right so it's kind of a, a nice option what did it cost I, you know, when I first started, I remember they were saying something like it was like a hundred and ninety dollars a day, if I'm right, uh, and that I started in 2012. So, whether or not the inflation has created maybe an increase, maybe 250, maybe you know. And uh, you know, I haven't gone on Expedia.com lately to see <laughs> if they have a new updated price. But right now, with it being suspended, I don't know. Was there a TV in here? There was. There was a TV in here. Unbelievable. Yeah. Wow. And back in the day, you know, people could bring DVDs. That was a thing, and now kids don't even know what DVDs are. Right. So. <laughs> and so, what kind of thing would you come in? Like, if you had a three-day sentence, yeah. what would that be for? I mean, it could be for a lot of different lower-level crimes. Any felony you have, you're not coming here. But if it's like a, your second or third offense DUI, and you're sentenced to a few days in jail, this is very typical what we saw for someone who comes here. Right. Um, and it just depends. And for instance, you could do a weekend, spend two nights, say you have a four-day sentence, two nights on a weekend and come back next weekend and do two more nights. So you can accomplish <laughs> the time in jail that you're supposed to. Can you have visitors come and stay with you? You know, I not stay with you, <laughs> but you can you can have visitors. There are visitor hours where same how you guys were in the- uh, With the telephone? There. Yeah, absolutely. So you could talk with a visitor through that phone aspect anytime. We've had inmates bring in all sorts of different things from drugs to weapons. Uh, there's a person that tried to bring in a knife that was concealed in their underwear. Uh, I've had people who put a safety pin and a little baggie of drugs and attached it to their inside of their underwear because their thought process was, I'm going to feel that. Are they going to go up into there and feel? Uh, so again, we capture a lot of people think they're going to get away with bringing stuff in, uh, but we have numerous checks. In addition to the officer searching them, another officer might search them and the jail staff. So you get numerous searches and sometimes the inmates say, well, why are you doing this again? Because I want to make sure because it's a, it's a deadly game if someone were able to bring a weapon in here. Because as we saw when we first came in, you can't bring weapons in here. Right. So if that person does get a weapon in, we're at a huge disadvantage. And you see how long it takes to get into the facility nonetheless. So we take it very seriously when we process people in. How does this compare to like a, a city jail? Uh, well, this is, would be very similar to a city jail. Uh, the only difference is a lot of other cities don't have this large of a facility. You might have a couple different cells, but depending on the city, it could have a very, very large jail. So LA, like the city of Los Angeles, some of their jail facilities are way larger than ours. And then obviously the county runs a full jail with like a thousand plus inmates. Right. So that is different levels of cities invest in the jail because if you go to Culver City, for instance, their jail's gonna look different. Santa Monica, their jail's gonna look very similar. Does each cell have just one inmate? For us, yes. Unless you're in one of those big holding cells for intoxication or, you know, in theory, the family cell is opened up again. <laughs> uh, so those are the things that we would have different aspects of people mixed together, but we'd like to keep people separate as much as possible. Makes that would sense. make us happy. Makes sense. Where are we going next? Well, let's take a look. Uh, I'm going to call down to our range because that would be fun. And maybe we can Ooh. get down there. So the range is, you know, inside, which helps out for officers training because their patrol staff has to qualify usually around once a month. They have to come in and actually qualify with their firearm, sometimes a long rifle, sometimes a shotgun. Uh, and different techniques, low light, they can turn the lights off in here, uh, and you'll have to use your flashlight. So there's different courses they'll get put through to make sure their training stays top notch. The last thing you want is to kind of be rusty. It's not like riding a bike where right. you can kind of just get back on and go. If you stop training with your firearm, you will lose those skills and it becomes that much harder to implement them, especially under stress. Right. You imagine your worst day, your heart's pounding, you're, you're nervous, your fine motor skills are going, and now you're asked to hit a target that's far away and people will say, why don't you shoot the gun out of his hand or why don't you shoot the knife out of their hand? <laughs> it's hard to do even when you're not nervous. Right, Let right. alone add all those human factors into it and you know not just watch it from a third person view. So, and that's yeah. what people see is a third person view, right? For yeah. sure, yeah. you know, and now with the, you know, all the body camera footage, it is kind of interesting. You get to see, it's great training for officers, but sometimes people have the, they forget there's the human emotions involved. And right, you hear adrenaline. People, yeah, and you'll hear people's breathing on those body cameras <sighs> because it's such a crazy amount of adrenaline. And I can't, you know, I've never been involved in officer involved shooting, thank God, but the people who have talk about everyone has a different reaction to that too. I'm sure, so. can't be nice. No, definitely not. Down in the end, you see it's all rubber basically. So every so often they have to actually remove all that rubber and clean out all the old lead from the bullet that's actually in that 
that whole mesh over there. Wow. So you can imagine thousands of rounds are in that and every so often you have to clean that out, otherwise you could have a lead issue. Right. So we also have on this wall, it's a white wall, and it kind of looks like a place you could have a projector. Well, that's exactly what it is. These three carts that are here, we roll them out and you can create a, uh, almost like a video game. You can have a screen where you're able to take a scenario where somebody is first saying it's in a warehouse, it's at night, and there's nobody around, and then all of a sudden the video will show someone, hey, let me see your hands and the person will pull out a, a gun. Oh man, wow, that was quick. They'll play the same scenario again. This time, you can set it to where they pull out their cell phone. And then maybe an officer accidentally shoots. Maybe they, you know, and it's good trained where they can learn how to have these split second decisions. Although there's no substitute to real life, it helps us with some additional training down here. We'll do that every so often, so. Amazing. Four firearm safety rules. We follow those all the time. The biggest one is number four. Be sure if you're targeting your surroundings. If we have a, or justified reason to shoot, but there's someone right next to you, or maybe behind you, or a school behind you, we may not be able to take that shot, even though we're legally justified to do so, because we have to be careful about innocent bystanders. Of course. Just adds another layer of complexity to the job that the officers face on a daily basis. Amazing. Yeah, it's a tough job. Very, very tough job. People don't realize what police officers actually do. When, when you approach a car, if you pull a car over for speeding, you have no idea who's in that car, right? right? You don't know if they have a gun, you don't know what their motive is. So you have to be very, very careful. And I guess everything is done for safety. Just as you said, we don't know. I right. don't know who you are, Scary. you know who I am. And regardless of your color, religion, race, doesn't matter. You could be a threat to an officer at any time and we just have to be ready for those things while simultaneously having a good attitude, try not to be a jerk to somebody. I'm friendly and nice. Another partner of mine might be the sarcastic type. You know, everybody, if you work in any business, That's you true. have That's those true. different people throughout your business. I, I won't tell them what you said about him. No, uh, don't, but, don't, don't, don't. But please, you know, no. you have those people and anything you do, especially something like Los Angeles Police Department, LAPD. They have like 9,000 employees that are sworn officers. How many of them are gonna be the poster guy of, of their department and how many are going to be different how many are going to be the the I've kind of equate to high school too you have the jocks you have the the nerds you have the people in you have everything groups everywhere you go that's true welcome to human nature so we try to find the best and the brightest to come here because again it's the best police department in the world so this was an original taser <laughs> right yeah that's a, one of the very very first tasers uh, that they ever created why does it have an antenna I don't know what happened in the past to make them need an antenna, but what I can tell you is the new ones, the Taser 10, which we have now, this thing is just leap years ahead of this now. In this, you actually have 10 darts versus whatever that does. You have 10 darts that you can fire at somebody individually. And the idea is a lot of times when we have to tase somebody, it's ineffective. You've seen many videos online where someone fires the taser and it doesn't work. And then it leads to officers having to use higher levels of force. With this, we're able to deploy these darts and you just keep going until you receive what's called NMI, neuromuscular incapacitation. In other words, when you see them like lock up really hard and right. fall over. And we've used this in the field. There's actually a guy walking down the street with a machete in his hand and wouldn't listen to commands. And the officers use this Taser 10, this brand new device that only a few agencies have in the country. And we're able to stop him with like five or six of these darts. But one of them finally got the connection and he just locks up, falls. We got the knife away from him and we're able to resolve that essentially without anyone getting hurt. Uh, but imagine how different it could be if we didn't have this or it fails. And now I'm this close to you and you have a knife. It's game over. It's cool. It just kind of loads right onto here and voila, you're ready to go. It makes some fancy noises, which I'll point in a safe direction here. You can kind of hear this um, when you want to give them a warning alert. So you want to give them some sort of visual and auditory uh, sensation that says, you're about to get tased. You lift up on the safety selector here and it <laughs> kind of gives like a <laughs> Star so Wars-y cool. kind of right, lightsaber sound cool. yeah. uh, and gives them a flash of those a thousand lumens in the eyes to say, hey, stop what you're doing. And if they don't, you would start deploying those taser darts as many as you need to affect that uh, person. I need to buy one of these before I leave here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. I was reading up on those because they also, there's a microprocessor that will detect which of the, the pins to kind of send the electricity between. So yeah. whereas before, if you didn't hit them with the two barbs, then you were out. Correct. With that, it'll pick any one of them and that's yeah. why they're so... Yeah, yeah, let's say you fire five darts and only two of them connect. The very first one and the very last one you fire. That system will actually evaluate that and also try to pick the best four connections on the body. So in theory, I put all 10 darts on you. 
the ones that it would activate are the ones that are furthest away and it would start learning and basically firing those off and say, oh, there's a connection, that's the best connection, and firing those out so that way you completely lock up. And once you fall, we can put someone in handcuffs and then stop the, uh, the Edison's medicine, as some people call it. <laughs> I so. love that Edison's medicine. <laughs> <laughs>Before we pass through these doors, you can see the sign that was created to kind of highlight the courage that the men and women of this police department uh, takes every day when they step through this door and start their shift in patrol. And it's true. Ooh, cars. <laughs> Your favorite. So down here, this is what we call A-level. A-level is our parking garage. So not as cool as your latest video with $150 million worth of, of equipment, but we might come close. <laughs> you know, we might have a pretty close to that. Uh, right out there, you can kind of see that ramp that comes down. That is right on Rexford Drive, right out front of the police station. And as the officer would come down here, they would take and find one of their parking spaces. You'll also notice the parking always back in almost every officer backs in and that's so we can rapidly get out and go so we'll walk over to our uh, world famous motor bay some, some of these cars have some amazing technology on them as well they do. Right? yeah we'll get inside one of our cars and take a look oh uh, this guy's got a parking ticket <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a, a write-up slip so when a car needs some maintenance an officer can write that slip and the shop can come over and take the car get oil changed whatever it may be uh, over here, we kind of have a, a little bit of a mix of a museum as well as our motor bay where our active motorcycles are here that the officers would take out and go write those tickets that we were talking about. Amazing. Beautiful bikes. Yeah, BMW makes uh, these bikes and you can even see the new ones. Uh, they're pretty brand new. You have an old school display here with your uh, different speedometer, tachometer, and then you look on the other one to the left, it's all electronic screens now. So the, the motor officers can't be a brand new officer because they have to know the streets. There's no GPS on this. Right. They have to know how to use the radio. They have to know basic police work because they're on their own. There is no partner with them. So our motor officers are even more uh, sometimes standoffish, as we talked about, because they have to be. They're by themselves, alone and unafraid, uh, and they have different equipment that they bring all with them. They have two different saddlebags here that they can put stuff inside of. Uh, you end up having their, their batons up in the back. They can actually lock their rifles in. So as you this, notice yeah. on this side, their rifle's locked in, so someone can't come over here and try to take a rifle or try to pull the trigger. There's no way to get to that. So that's one advantage. But you know, all these spikes, you have to carry everything you need with you. Right. And sometimes the officer will leave their helmet. Sometimes they take it with them. You got the radar gun over here on the right. You can pull that one out if you'd like. Boo, and then throw it on the floor. Oh, is it locked in? Yes, yeah, locked in. Uh, I wonder why. Oh, the key, right? <laughs> yes. So in this case, you know, you have to actually use the key to get this accessible because you know what, what someone would love to do? Take that from of the bike. Of course. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Sirens. Yep, so as sirens, the other thing you'll see in new bikes nowadays is there's a yellow light. Now, I've never been a motor officer, but one of the things that I was told by that is it helps me substantially more visible to cars whether it's at night or during the day, because it's not just one headlight shining through or two for this matter. You see, oh, wait a minute, this is a shape here coming at me. Keeps them a lot safer from being hit from someone in a blind spot, because that's one of the biggest dangers of these guys. Right. They get a hazard pay specifically because of how dangerous it is to ride these bikes, especially in our city in Beverly Hills. Yeah, <laughs> so. I'm sure. <laughs> then they have, you know, a little this memorial museum type of thing here. Oh, that's so cool. Back in the day, the old... How old is this bike? Well, you know, it's a, the old Kiyosaki, like, I have no idea what it, how old it is, but it's possible Great that Great piece it's of a, memo, memorabilia. Yeah. Very cool. Look at the jacket, the leather jacket. Le there, like will be, there will be a motorcycle fan somewhere in the comments. Let us know what year is this likely to be. Oh, I'm sure they would know. I'm guessing 70s? Oh, just run the license plate. No yeah, there you go. <laughs> 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 Perfect. Cool. So yeah. you have your PA. As you can see, it's extremely loud. This, when we have the, this came uh, from somewhere. I don't know where that came from. Oh, whoops. Well, in that case. <laughs> no, this is a, just the officer's personal charger for their phone. Oh. So we'll start with over here. Typical car. Nothing crazy about the controls that you have on this side. There is only one button on the far left side, which is like a. Um, it should be an indicator if you the one with the red light on it uh the far far left next to the toggle so yep that so if you push that so what that did is you'll see this green here it shows a key if you were to as you notice there's no keys in the car 
it's, no keys. It's still running. So right now, if you push your foot on the brake, don't do it though, the engine would shut off. Okay. But a lot of times we'll go to a call and someone says, hey officer, you left your car running. We know. The reason we kept it running is because all this equipment takes that energy, that power from the car's battery. It will stay on for a little bit, but eventually it's going to stop and you have to restart everything. Right. And so it's a lot of stuff to return on. It's kind of like a spaceship. With that start, uh, start stop button, you can basically push that, take the keys out of the car, go to a call, come back, put the keys in and drive. If someone were to smash out my window, get inside and try to put their foot on the brake to put it into gear, the car will turn off. So it kind of helps the officers That's prevent clever. them from That's clever. having I issues about of that. someone stealing their car, which would be quite embarrassing for a police officer to have someone steal their car. The computer is kind of the hub of the car and you're allowed to do a lot of different things. And we will start with our actual interior cameras. You get a good view of who's in the back seat and you can just hit record. And while the officers are driving around, let's say with an inmate back to the jail, they can watch them on the camera the whole time to make sure they're not ingesting drugs or something. Granted, their hands are behind their back, uh, trying to hide something. And if you were to look in YouTube, there's numerous videos of people doing some weird stuff back there from trying to get a gun out of their waistband, different aspects that we want to prevent. And watching them on camera is one of those ways we can do that. So the front camera, this doesn't look in great resolution, uh, but it actually is able, it's very good resolution. You can even zoom in. And this records everything from this that we have up here. The other cool thing about this is it has a built-in automated license plate reader. So while we're driving, this camera is actually taking pictures of all the license plates that are passing by Whoa. and able to identify if a stolen vehicle passes by you or has a warrant attached to the plate or is a wanted person. That's amazing. So you that can just be driving amazing. and all of a sudden this thing will alert the officer, hey, right next to you, bozo, you got a bad guy and you can actually go and effect that stop. Do or, all police departments have this? Probably not all police departments uh, because this is kind of a, a combination of different technologies. We have dash cameras and automated license plate readers. The new uh, model that we have up here from Axon, I think it's the Fleet 3, combines all those things together. And it's a pretty expensive product, obviously. Uh, and we have, uh, they just created it probably, I'm guessing a year or two ago. So as more agencies can afford it and install it in their vehicles, um, they probably will, because it's cool to combine all of those things together. Then the car is connected to the internet. One of the advantages of the internet, I won't open up their web browser. That's probably a bit not smart. Uh, they probably set me up. But for the most part, if you uh, need to, let's say, take a picture of evidence in the field, you can upload that to your email, pull up your email from here, and attach it directly to a police report in your car. You could write all your police reports in your car and only come back to the station to physically book evidence, like our bikes, uh, if you need to. But I remember one of the big things that police officers used to say, they spend so much time writing reports yes. after they finish oh, their, yeah. their, uh, their term, yeah. right? They say every, you know, it's a Newton's law, I think, every action has an opposite and equal reaction. Every cool thing you do has an opposite and equal paperwork reaction, right. if not more. Uh, so we do still write a lot of police reports, process a lot of paperwork. It takes a lar long time part of the job, a, l a large chunk of your job. And any officer that comes in thinking, oh, you don't have to be smart to be a police officer, uh, you've got to be a, a very good writer. Uh, right. And that's a minimum. And from there, you have to learn all the other technologies, be able to defend yourself, defend others, drive a police car with lights and siren on. Those things are obviously tough for some people to get down and that's why some of our trainees don't make the process. Right, makes sense. Down below, I'm gonna move this over so you can see this side. You have your standard cigarette lighter, just in case you have your GPS. Some officers will actually put in a GPS system and attach it to their window because if a pursuit happens, one of the common myths is that, oh, well, if you leave Beverly Hills, you just have to stop. Like the old school, you know, chase music. It cuts the chase music, you just have to stop. We're allowed to pursue anybody anywhere at any time through the state of California. Uh, would we is different, but we can follow them. And if we leave our jurisdiction, we make sure our officers know our city like the back of their hand. Right. But outside the city in LA, I don't know what streets are where, so some officers will run a GPS in the car. The radio uh, is down here, typical police radio. You can turn the volume up here or change the channel. You also have this little red button, which is an emergency trigger or E-trig as we call it. The, if you push that, it will give you the radio for 10 seconds uninterrupted by anybody else. So if you have an emergency where you need to call somebody right now and you don't have time for formalities even, you can push that trigger and it will interrupt everybody else on the radio to give you that radio. How clever, that's so clever. And then down here, if I'll let 
you do the honors, if you turn this all the way to the right, you're going to turn all of our lights for the car. There you go. Yeah, look at that. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're just at the lights. So, you know, you switch to the Christmas lights. But if you just do one, it's going to turn on just a Ford facing. Uh, and you see the back is on. And so this is nice because at night, you don't want, if you're standing next to the car as an officer, you can already see his face is kind of lighting up. Yeah, yeah. But and, when, it's, and it's bright. It's bright. But when you turn on all three, which you can switch one more, you see it's even more brightness. Yeah, that's really bright. And so we will stop a car at night. As soon as they pull over, sometimes we'll switch it back to that two. Where there, no, that's one, that's that's off. Yeah, two. There, yeah, two. <laughs> so now you have a Ford facing red, so they know they're still not allowed to go, right. but we're able to kind of see a little bit more. Do all cars have exactly the same lights? Uh, yes, all will have that three levels. One is just the back lights, two is having forward and the back, and three is the full rotators if you were going somewhere lights and siren. Right. Down here, we also have the other buttons, so you can kind of get a spotlight on, you can turn a takedown light on, so if you look in front of us now, it's a lot brighter than it was, here's the difference. So you imagine you get stopped in the middle of the night and all of a sudden you feel like you're being abducted by a space alien with how much <laughs> light is being put on you. Right. There's a reason. We want to make sure we illuminate you as much as possible um, to keep you from you know being able to get a weapon we can't see in at night. It could be you could stop anywhere where this you This is can't like a toy see. shop. I, know, yeah, I mean cool. it's, it's so cool. So you have all these different lights that you can turn on, uh, but for the most part, those are the most important lights that you will see that we use. Old school videos of cops, they will stop and it's a pursuit. And they put the car in park and they run out of the car to go deal with someone, the siren just goes the whole time. Uh. So now they fix that issue. If it's in park, once you put it in park, the siren will automatically turn off, which is great. So I'll have you put the car keys in there. I don't know if you've ever every car have used the same one of these key? before. Uh, a long time ago. <laughs> uh, yes, all the cars do actually have the same key, so officers could have that. Do you want so to turn you, it? Yep, go ahead and turn it. Okay, so put your foot on the brake. Now put it in gear, just in a drive, and just hold your foot on the brake. So I'm going to go ahead and hit turn on the siren here. Wow. <laughs> it's That's so insane. Put it in park. Insane. There you go. And yeah, you've driven a police. And now, because you have the safety stop thing Press on. Press this. No, no, it's already on. You can just pull the keys out. Turn them and pull it out. There you go. Let me turn these cameras off, but that's the inside of a police car. I'll show Amazing. You the, I'll show you the back too. I would suggest not sitting on no, the back I'm not. seat. Oh, so, not, not a whole lot of room back there. No, that, it's more room than you think actually, but it's it's not a lot of room. So one of the things that these things have done now is these seat belts, there's some cars that have magnets, but in this one, I'm trying to pull it a little more here. There we go. It actually has this where you can connect it here. Up here. So what ends up happening is I'm a bad guy and I go to get put in the car I can easily just unclip it here and strap it here and put their seatbelt on them without having to reach over, which you can imagine could be a bad thing to do in front of your inmates. Not to mention my ear, you know, you could be a Vandy Holerfield uh, and have your ear bitten off by Tyson um, right here if that were to be the case. And that has happened to officers being headbutted actually in the past where they leaned in to put someone's seatbelt on. No good deed goes unpunished. Headbutt right in the face. So wow. um, this has actually Things surprised. Things you don't even think about. Right, a lot of room actually back here, and you notice it's plastic because we can wash this out when need be. Uh, if because we've had people vomit, uh, use the restroom, you name Put it. Use the poke, restroom. Put your head in there and have I'm a sniff. Not going in there. So this one maybe not. This is one of our newer cars, so you actually probably be okay if you were to sit back here. It's not as dirty as some of the others. But it is a you know a backseat of a police car, so <laughs> not exactly the you know gourmet not many, not, not people ideal. end up. Back and here. I notice it doesn't have electric windows in the back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. Exactly. You can't do that. Yeah. Ironically enough, they have those hard plastic windows there. Uh, people still try to kick them out every now and then, which uh, doesn't work well. But you no, know, some agencies just... use actual bars on the window. But that you can't get through that, right? No, uh, I no. mean people have tried, and, and you'll dent it for sure. But you're not getting out of the car, and right. even if you did, you know we're not going to stop the car and now come and restrain you. Right. We're just going to let you do it. No, so it's it's very rare. And if anybody's in the back seat, we'll be standing somewhere nearby monitoring them because we can't just leave them there and walk away. Mainly because if there's some sort of medical issue, right. if something happens and we don't know, that delay could be deadly. So for us, we're constantly monitoring and arresting in the back because if they're in our care, we have to make sure they are cared for. So. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. This little, you know, bread box up here has two, uh, uh, they look like 40 millimeter rounds, like the sponge rounds you think about uh, when we fire them from a less than lethal weapon. 
they would actually be able to launch it on a, a, a remote or from the car onto the back bumper of a vehicle that's fleeing. And that is actually super sticky and there's no way to pull it off basically. And that has a GPS signal sent up to a satellite and we can follow that car without oh, having to be in active pursuit. That is so brilliant. a lot of the cars are being outfitted with these currently. Really, really sticky, that stuff. So when we're training on them, I mean, you touch it and you're just like, ah, <laughs> get off my hand. That's uh, so cool. So you just launch it, stick yep. it to someone's bumper and then go, good luck getting away. Correct. And let's say they said, you know what? Oh, I know what that is. Because most criminals don't even know what it is. They could get out of the car, come back there, try to yank it off, and all they're gonna do is make it worse. And leave their fingerprints on it. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> right? So they're just gonna make it worse. That sticky stuff is going nowhere. Uh, and it really doesn't do a whole lot of damage to the car uh, in when, it, when it impacts. So how do they get it off? So eventually there is a way that we get it off, which you have there, there is a yeah. proprietary way yes. uh, to get it off, but I won't announce that just yet no. on camera. Uh, but for the most part, it is, it is a great system, another tool for officers to keep the community safe. And really you're noticing a whole technological aspect to the brand new cameras, brand new tasers, star chase to stop cars and from going in pursuit. So what's this enormous siren? So this is my boom box whenever I want to play music on the street. No, uh, this is the, the LRAD and the LRAD, uh, you know, forget, forgive me, I forgot exactly what it stands for, but it's a glorified, very directive speaker. And so if we're in some uh, a civil unrest scenario and you have a group of people that you'd like to disperse, this can either just play a normal message and very loudly, or it can direct that all of that sound to like a group of people standing there. I've actually, when I was in the military, I actually was behind one of these. It was a lot larger than this. And you're standing at least a hundred yards away. And this thing sounds like you have a loud, incredibly loud, the loudest siren I've ever heard, kind of like we did the police car, right next to your ear. Oh. And you're a hundred yards away from it and or more. And that is the directed power of this to kind of do that. So you have lots of options and modes. Do we use it on that? No, uh, but you could in theory. Where do you keep your SWAT vehicles? Yeah, we should go see that, shouldn't we? Yeah. Yeah, we should. Let's yeah, go let's do, do it. That. Yeah. <laughs> you have the actual like command hub. This has the officer's equipment, uh, new uniforms, uh, a lot of the bigger things. So where in theory, you could just show up in your personal car, get to the scene where SWAT is, grab your equipment out of this and be a full ready to go SWAT officer in a moment's notice. So it's kind of like the uh, Superman phone booth, you know, <laughs> and voila. Uh, on the other side, we have what we call the Bearcat. And the Bearcat Whoa. is an armored vehicle, which will stop uh, many rounds, obviously going through this. Chop that, chop it. I know. It's harder than you can even imagine. Even when you knock on it, it hurts, like your, yeah, it hurts, your, knuckles, it hurts right? your knuckles. Uh, inside, you have a very typical kind of thing that you saw with the other police car, just no computer. So there's no computer here. Oh, it's built on a Ford Super Duty platform. Yep. I've always wondered what these were underneath. Right. Ah. So it is, it is a great vehicle. We have to keep it plugged in and ready to go at any time because officers in patrol can still use it. So we've had circumstances where it's a barricaded person in a vehicle and we don't want the vehicle to go in pursuit. That's very dangerous. So we'll grab this, park it right in front of them <laughs> and they're not going anywhere. <laughs> right. So we're right. parking a house yeah. in front yeah. of them. Yeah. Uh, and in this, we have some of the equipment's inside, but they, you know, they don't have all the equipment in it at all times, but it can hold, if you look in the back here, you can see just how many people can be squeezed into this in full gear, uh, quite a few, and even have these gun ports that are coming out of the side that in theory you had to pull a gun out of here, you could. And it has a turret on the top as yep. well. New meaning to bulletproof car. Yeah, but we have the ram and stuff. So here, I mean, like you can- Chop this. I don't... Yeah, but it, it, it's- it. John, oh, look John, at that. Keys to the city. Keys to the city. There you go. This is when you, like, yeah. this is heavy. <laughs> it's not, not what you expect, is it? Where you can even this, see the, uh, where does it go? I'm putting it here. Shield here. Oh, there you go. I'll take it after you're done. Yeah, mate. That's what you need for the haters. Oh yeah, look, it's got, <laughs> it has lights on it. You got it? Yeah, it's heavy. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's got to stop bullets and things. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Are these like class three? You know, I don't know what it's rated to, uh, but they're definitely a great tool that they use all the time. Yeah. Uh, because it's better than standing there. This is the one you want. And also look, yes. this one looks like it's taken some uh, rounds. And they use some of these things in training. I mean, you can pick this one up. It's still the same kind of weight as this. Yeah. This might be even higher level because this is not as heavy. Plus it's a little older model. You see how the bigger uh, vision here yeah. is crucial. Is so like guys, what you, what you don't realize is when you see police in situations where they need to have these shields. This probably weighs 30 pounds. Sure. It's, yeah, it's probably really right. heavy. 
that in itself is a task, just yep. moving forward with it. Yeah, this is being held by somebody. They have the rifle, they have all the vest, the extra layer of armor they wear to keep them safe. So they do have to stay in good shape. That's why they're required every year to go through physical fitness assessments to make sure they can do it. Wow. It's not easy. Pick this one up. So this one is lighter than that one. Yeah. But it's heavy. Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> So that's our SWAT stuff. Uh, there's the mobile command center is the only other big giant vehicle we have. Housed Armory. On. Yeah, this is where they keep the um, the larger munitions, whether that's tear gas or um, different weapons platforms that they don't have normally. Like a, we have a 50 caliber sniper rifle. So some of those rounds, which are not accessible to the public, obviously, right. they keep it in here because an, our average officer doesn't need those things either. So we also have our dispatch center here, 24 seven, just like officers. And they have the same type of shifts that we do. And they will be in here nonstop answering calls and then also dispatching to any type of emergency and talking with the officers out there. So uh, we can go inside and actually say hi to our dispatchers. Let's say hello. Uh, hi everybody. This is Michael. Hi. And so dispatch is kind of unique because there's a lot that goes on. You're gonna hear all sorts of bells and cameras and everything else going on. They're watching cameras. You'll see more of that later on. Uh, but you see, if you count how many monitors they have, they have seven. I don't do good public math, so I did it in advance. <laughs> but you have seven monitors that they're looking at to deal with this. The multitasking that's needed for this job is through the roof. I can imagine. Is that why they're all ladies? Pro you know what? <laughs> Smart man. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you must be the rare one. Yeah. You're the one that all the ladies want. Yeah, that corner, okay, so. you, both of you. <laughs> so on this, all, all these systems are, you know, and they have to learn all this. Anything about the training timeline for an officer it takes it takes a long time. Train an officer to be ready to go out on their own. Dispatch has to do almost a year long process, if not longer, to learn. They got to learn the fire department, how to rescue someone, give CPR instructions over a phone, assess someone's medical emergency. Then they can move on, let's say, to the police department side or the police department. Now you got to learn all of our codes. You got to learn all the penal codes. So you have to know when someone calls and says, hey, this this transient, this person experiencing homelessness is, is fighting with someone. They have to translate that to cop talk transient 415 and give it to an officer. So someone else takes a phone call in here and then while they are, here's another common misconception. You think, hey, well, you're still talking to me. Get the officer here, get the officer here. When they're talking to you, they're already entering all this information to a call. A separate dispatcher, which like right now, Megan's on that side, is talking to the officers in the field. So now the officers are able to get this information and respond to that call. And as the person's getting more information, they can update them. Okay. So the other interesting thing is I just said all this stuff I guarantee Megan heard all of it because the multitasking that they can do, they can. Ah. <laughs> she does She's that listening. anyway. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, but for the most part, they're able to just literally, it, it blows my mind that they can That's hear. Amazing. See, That's they can hear really... that conversation, talk on the radio, replay something back. Uh, and that skill is literally has to be trained because most people, when you're talking to someone, you don't, when you're driving a car, right? Do you, if, if you and I are driving a car together, and you're talking to me, do I have prioritize talk radio and listen to that first before you? No, I talk to the person right here. Right. But in police work, you have to do it the other way around. You have to focus on the radio first, break that habit, and then on the individuals, because I can always ask you to repeat what you said. Right. I only get one shot at the radio sometimes. Very interesting, very cool. But you can see if you want to sit down. How many do cameras are there the in Beverly Hills? So we'll talk about that when we get to the real time watch there, but we have over 2,300 cameras in the city and it's growing and some are being increased in the uh, ability. So some are obviously lower quality cameras and when they first started and now they're getting upgraded to 4K and pan tilt zoom and you'll see some of those cameras and you'll be like, wow, you can watch somebody like picking their nose like in a car from 40 feet away or more, you know, it's, it's That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Wow, um, very interesting. But you can give your shot, uh, a shot at being a dispatcher. Let's do it. So, you know, you can have your, your phone here, a typical phone, as you imagine they have that, so you can rest it. Yeah, you can rest it right on your shoulder, so you can type with both hands. You could also wear like an actual <laughs> a headset aspect to it too. And you see on the bottom there, there's actually a pedal. That's a pedal. And if you were to push that, that's actually what is able to broadcast over the radio, so you can just do it with your foot. So that's I can start so talking and typing and pushing a pedal to broadcast to the officers in the field. Wow. So it is a very unique system. All these 
different buttons. She's on the fire department side um, and something will come in, let's say from a different jurisdiction and they'll send it out to where it needs to go or they'll have one from another place come here and then they'll deal with it. They gotta know how to call public works. They gotta know how to call uh, pretty much everybody. So this place can be just busy and that's why you see so many dispatchers. Stealing vehicles. Yeah. So we get stolen vehicle alerts here from the automated license plate readers from the real-time watch center and the dispatchers will verify that plate and they'll give it out to the field officers to say hey this is where it just went go look for it and then they'll be ready for it if it turns to a pursuit Amazing. or something like that so criminals don't come to beverly hills you're not gonna last long <laughs> one of the things the dispatcher told me one time what's the funniest like call you've ever got I'm saying wow you know how we had an earthquake yesterday I'm like yeah right afterwards someone called and asked me when's the next one <laughs> So, you know, just they can get calls from that to the only thing they hear on the line is screaming. And you say, what's going on? Try to, they have to stay calm yeah. and try to get this information from somebody who's just screaming. And so at a certain point, you kind of think, wow, this is a tough job because they're sitting here maybe relaxing not, and all of a sudden screaming. So that emotional intelligence of just being able to stay calm as a cucumber is another factor in this job people kind of don't even think about. Mm -hmm. They have to turn off their human factors. Amazing. So, yeah. Amazing. So this is a CSI of Beverly Hills. CSI Drive. Yes. Love it. They have their very own uh, office spaces and processing areas. You know, if we're, if we're lucky and I'm nice to them, they might let us come back behind this barrier. But even I don't have access to get past uh, and access this area because some of it, they have some of the most sensitive case information that's being worked on. Right. The DNA evidence can solve a substantial number of crimes nowadays. They do fingerprinting, DNA, um, and they can collect from footprints, you name it. They have the ability. All Blood stuff, splatter. Yeah, I've been stuff. watching too much Dexter. Dexter. Yeah, you have, yeah. It's a great show, by the <laughs> yeah, way. Yeah, great show. Uh, all the things that they do in here are um, state-of-the-art equipment, and they get a lot of training. And a lot of times people wonder, well, I want to get involved in CSI. Well, it's hard because there's not that many openings for these spots, and it takes an incredible amount of education. Hey, can we come back? Can we? I have to ask permission. I just told them. You run the show. I have to ask permission. Okay, you can come back. All right, let's do it. So this is our, our crime lab. So we are uh, the crime scene investigation unit. We will go out and assist the officers collecting fingerprints, any sort of um, biological evidence, DNA, blood. Um, we can run fingerprints. That's actually what we use that computer back here for. Um, we can pull latents from any um, type of um, items of evidence. If that person has been arrested or at some point fingerprinted, we could get a match and then we just do like the whole visual it's not like the tv where it's like hey match match like <laughs> we actually have to do like the one-to-one -one comparisons under our, our microscopes and whatnot this is where we process dna primarily so we can do presumptive blood test gunpowder residue anybody that shot a gun uh, we can collect that and then send it off to be analyzed or um, dna reference swabs for elimination purposes or for inclusion purposes of a suspect. Um, that way we can do just like one-to-one -one comparison. So we do all that here. We have our little woody. If we have any sort of clothing that might have any sort of like bullet holes or knife marks for stabbings, we can dress him and, and kind of show up uh, in what area of the body those could have been. Or if we just want to display like the clothes, um, maybe like something that a suspect's wearing, we can take a photo of it and then a press release can be put out by our crime analysis unit. And then we have a bunch of like our fancy little machines. So this has light, we're able to use it um, like for indented writing or whatnot. This system here helps us visualize any fingerprints and we keep a lot of the supplies here for the officers. Tapes, envelopes. This reminds me of chemistry in school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's like an old school lab. We have these fume hoods that allow us to be able to do presumptive tests on drugs and that's why the fume Put on. Our evidence drying cabinet, victims' clothing are wet or they're wet with blood or biological fluids, we can dry them out so when they're packaged and examined they don't mold up. Our shower just for emergency purposes. Can it like spook you out sometimes dealing with some of this stuff? Oh yeah, yeah, um, sometimes. Uh, <laughs> uh, when you bring up shower for emergency purposes, yeah. that's, that's like, whoa. That's yeah. the only time I shower. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, we haven't had like a chemical spill or any of that, but just in case, just in case, um, we've used it um, where we've gone out to scenes and there's, you know, blood on the floor or muddy or whatnot. We, you know, more, 
more than anything used it to like rinse out our shoes and, and supplies that we have, but it's it's there and ready to use in case any um, chemical spills do, do happen. These two machines here can put a various amount of items of evidence in there. Put a couple drops of super glue and the humidity will make it stick to the moisture of the fingerprints that are left behind and it'll make like a hard plastic version of it. So they'll, they'll develop in, the, in this white residue that we see here and then we're able to use either fingerprint powders, black, silver, or sometimes neon colors depending on the background color of our evidence or we can use chemicals to enhance them. So sometimes we're able to lift them onto um, a card with some tape. Sometimes we're able to just take photographs because of the chemicals that we're using, but we're able to capture those. Um, so we use these two for these. Um, my favorite processing item is uh, guns. So I've had a lot of success retrieving fingerprints from uh, from guns and magazines and sometimes from, from ammunition that's been loaded. So we get like really good success with, with all of this. and very proactive work. We're able to get names pretty quickly if this person's been arrested with all the information that we're getting from the officers. Uh, but it's basically like the- Amazing. The gist of it. Thank you for that. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Really, really appreciate it. So this is the Real Time Watch Center, a revolutionary aspect of law enforcement where we're combining the city's technologies, which some cities have this technology in smaller uh, doses. So automated license plate readers, cameras, uh, maybe even a drone. Uh, but we take all that and you can even hear our radio or they'll pump in live 911 calls. So they'll hear it in this operations center. And as you'll notice, you have these different stations where you'll see that there are people watching the cameras 24 seven. They can look for active crimes or they can also pull back video and look for something that already did happen and find key evidence to help our investigators capture those people on the back end, which happens all the time. Our SWAT officer just served a search warrant last week relating to a robbery suspect that occurred in June. So we've got all the evidence we needed by going back and looking at these type of things, gathering that evidence and building that case, and then going and knocking on his door and saying, hello, we'd like you to come back to Beverly Hills on our dime. Did you knock on it with that big key to the city we uh, saw? Maybe. So, <laughs> <laughs> so they have their techniques of getting people to come out of the house. And so you we, said there's 2,300 cameras? Yeah, they're, and then growing. So we have more cameras on the way, more upgrades planned, and the city continuously puts money into that aspect because it works. Is that a drone I'm seeing? Correct. So if you'll see over here, our drone operator today, Officer Givens. He's a, normally a motor officer who's out there writing tickets and doing things we saw in the motor bay, but he can come in here and work this as a shift. And the reason it needs to be an officer is because he has to recognize these streets from the air. He needs to know our radios. He needs to know our terminology, our lingo, and how our systems work to help officers get guided in to a suspect potentially that's committing a crime. So um, he is- Hence why not very many people get away with crimes in Beverly Hills. Correct. So he's communicating with someone who is on top of a roof, like we had talked about where they launched this drone. So they'll launch the drone and then from there he can fly around and what he's watching is a property where there's a burglary alarm. And so he's probably first on scene. There's probably no officers there yet at all. And he's able to watch the property, zoom into the backyard as you can see here and look and see if there's anybody trying to run away when an officer shows up. So that's the officer actually searching the property. And so what ends up happening is he's gonna check the property around to look for any open doors, windows, something that is because a sign. Because the alarm went off. Correct. And so if they do see those signs, obviously they'll ask for additional resources. They might search the entire house looking for a suspect. If they don't see anything, everything looks secure, could be a false alarm. It happens a lot, but we have to treat every single one of them as if it's real. Right. Um, and in those false alarms, sometimes it's set off because nobody wants to think about this in Beverly Hills, but sometimes when you're not home, mice like to take over your house uh, or other animals or Did you hear that? yes even the city does have cockroaches ironically and sometimes there can be a large cockroach that can set off people's motion detectors um, so <laughs> that's a big old cockroach right? all the time. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah so it's one of those things that you know you never know what the false alarm is from it could be a faulty wire it could be all sorts of things but every officer when they get on scenes got to search these giant properties and sometimes they're huge and it takes several officers and a long period of time to search the whole thing so I have have an, an app on my phone it's BHP alert yes and it will say uh, investigation going on Crescent Drive yes uh, and then three minutes later it'll say robbery uh, robbery investigation or something and then three minutes later 
suspect apprehended. Yes. Um, yes. It's amazing. Yeah, we like to give people some as, as much information as we can. Yeah. You know, we can't say it's Professor Plum with the candlestick in the living room, but you know, we can give a lot of details to the public to stay away from here. We're searching for somebody. And once we get them, we do like to tell people, hey, we have all of them in custody, yeah, no need to worry. Amazing, amazing. We're out here in front of the police department because there's also a special guest I wanted to introduce you to. It's one of our canine handlers, Officer Mike Downs, and his dog. Hi, I don't want to shake your hand because I might get my arm ripped off, oh, right? No, he's very he's friendly. friendly. Good boy, can I stroke him? Absolutely. Hi. Yeah, a good pet. Hi, good boy. What's this his is name? Darko. Darko, can I say hi? Absolutely. How you doing? Oh, he's sweet. <laughs> How old is he? Uh, he is six years old. Oh, bless him. Six last month. Adam and I are both huge dog lovers. Yeah. They do an amazing job and he loves you. He's a good pup. Uh, good boy. Darko is a six-year-old Belgian Malinois, uh, originally from the Czech Republic. He came over to the United States at about six months. Um, he is trained in apprehension and uh, explosives detection. Wow. And did you train him? Uh, so we typically will get them trained, but we train with them pretty much weekly, uh, if not daily, um, to make sure that they stay up on all the skill sets that we need them for. Uh, and this is his toy, right? Yes. And he'll do anything for his toy? Within reason, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and within reason means apprehending suspects and explosives. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Anyway. That's pretty heavy duty. Yeah, good dog. Can we take it? Oh, oh. Oh. Now that's brave. <laughs> yeah. That is very brave. Oh. Very good boy. <laughs> he doesn't even try. I mean, it's, oh, there we go. Yeah. He's beautiful. He's absolutely gorgeous. He's a good try. I have a German sure. Shepherd Husky Hi. mix, so Hi. I love this oh, very good. good boy. <laughs> wow, he's got some power. Yes. Oh, wow. And he's not, even, he's not even doing anything. Yeah. He's got, more than yeah, a little bit more than Bernadoodle. Yeah. Not, not a lot of weight, but uh, oh, he, wow. is, he is very good. At good what he boy. Does. Good boy. <laughs> well, I'll hand him back to you. <laughs> Thank you so much for Absolutely. introducing him. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Sergeant Newman. Call me Jeff. Jeff, yeah. this, this has been incredible. Great. Thank you yeah. so, so much for this incredible tour. Guys, make sure you follow BHPD on Instagram. They have an amazing Instagram. And learn more about the BHPD Police Department. It's, it's just incredible. It really is. And this has been an experience. So thank you. My pleasure. We're hiring. We hope everybody had a good time. And we look forward to maybe doing something in the future as well. I look forward to that too. And guys, you know what to do. We're in it to win it. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell. Don't miss anything? No. Don't speed. Don't speed. Don't speed, especially in Beverly Hills. <laughs> Bye.